Okay, Alexi, you are whispering, but we are live on the air at English no Kruhaju. Enough preparation. We're doing it live. Da. Okay, let's do it. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of English no Kruhaju. Alexia, first, let's talk about our lovely, wonderful sponsors, Cambly. What do you want to say about Cambly? Do you want me to say something? <laughs> yes, you started. Go ahead. Okay, I started this mess. I will get us out of it. So, Cambly is one of the coolest online platforms to learn a language that I have ever seen. And honestly, it's kind of my job to stay up to date with cool online language things. And Cambly is one of the coolest. Why are they the coolest? Because you can get on demand English teachers whenever you want. That means So if you are up in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. because you can't sleep, like me, you can do an English class. If you are on the bus, you can do an English class with anybody from anywhere in the world. All your classes are recorded. It's amazing. And the most amazing part is you can get your first class for free using the promotional code English Nui Kru. So go to Cambly.com or download the Cambly application on your iPhone, your Android, wherever you download apps and use the promotional code English n u c r e to get your first class for free. Do it. It's awesome for your English and it really helps support the show. How was that, Alexia? It was perfect. Well, <laughs> I don't know about that, but let's get on with the show. Oi, fala aí pessoal, bom dia. Você está escutando o inglês no inglês no inglês no rádio. I am your host, Foster Hodge. This is your daily dose of English. Hey Alexia. Hey Foster. <laughs> How are you? Hey Foster. I'm fine. What about you? I'm doing pretty well. Thank you. So, Alexia, in yesterday's episode, you suggested or you asked for me to clarify about some political things, namely the government shutdown in the US. And honestly, that was torture for me because. It's really difficult for me to talk about US politics and stay neutral. And it was a subject that I don't know too, too much about. So today, I know.、Uh, okay. So today, I get to choose the topic. Yes. So rem rem no. remember this when you asked me to talk about Brazil's government to Carioca Connection podcast. Okay.、It's、very hard. I will remember it. So, obviously, Alexia, when I get to choose the topic, it's probably going to be a nerdy language linguistic thing. But this one's fun, I promise. And that's why we love you. <laughs> that's the only reason why Alexia loves me. Okay, I will think about that later.、Um... <laughs> okay, I'm g o n n a go ahead. So, Alexia, do you know what homophones are? Yes. Okay, did you know what homophones were before like 10 minutes ago? No. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> so, just to explain it for everyone,、um, homophones are two words, can be two or more words, that have the exact same pronunciation. So, we say them in the exact same way when we're speaking, but they have different meanings, right? So, right. Yeah. And they're also spelled differently. So, the way we write them is different, and what they mean is different. But when we say them, they are the exact same. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, before we dive straight into some examples, do you have any examples that you can think of off the top of your head, maybe? 
Mm, maybe. Maybe eight. An, ah, and nice. Eight. Yes, I was going to give you the hint of a number. So two of the classic ones that most people know, even if they don't know what it is. Um, the first one, eight and eight. So we have the number eight, which we write that in a very strange way in English. We write it E-I-G-H-T, which makes no sense. But then we also have the past tense of the verb to eat. But the pronunciation? Okay, say the number for me, Alexia. Say my name again. Say my say, name. Say my name. <laughs> say the number for me. I know, but I ask you to say my name again because it was a little bit weird. Um, Alexia. Yeah. Alexa. Eight. <laughs> no. Okay, the number eight. Okay, can you tell me what did you eat for breakfast? I ate waffles. <laughs> nice. That's a That's usual breakfast <laughs> for, for Alexia. Okay. Exact same pronunciation, right? Yeah. So another eight, eight. very common homophone that a lot of people know about that has to do with numbers would be two, two, and two. Wait, two, two, and two. Yep. Do you? I am two. Two plus three. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that's strange. We have three twos in English. It's just like porque in Portuguese, right? Yeah. Porque, porque, porque. Yeah. So can you try to explain to me, or how about, let's just, you give me an example of each two. So first, use the number two in a sentence. Okay. Um, today, I ate two waffles. Mm, today I ate two waffles. Nice. What about two as in T O O? Um, I would love to eat waffles during dinner. Now, two. No, no, I had. You don't all. I know. I know that my dad loves waffles too. Yeah, I know that my dad. Loves waffles, too. Yeah. Yeah. So we have the number two. We have T-O-O, -O, which would mean like also or thumbbang, right? That's why. Yes, I always get confused with as well and two. Yeah, more or less the same thing. Perhaps as well is a little bit more formal, but essentially they are the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then we have this simple preposition, too which I think everyone knows how to use. Like, I'm going to the movies tomorrow. The movies. Right. Perfect. Okay, Alexia, we have one more um, pair of homophones with numbers. One and one. One and one. Okay. So ah! We, we have uh -huh. the number one, which is O-N-E. And then we have the past tense of when. So can you give me an example of each one? Yeah. Um, one day. One day. One day. I'll, I'm going to visit Greece. Um, and I don't know, a few years ago, I won a medal practicing swimming is that true yeah huh. i also won a medal the six and under category so six years and below that in butterfly i still think i have the spartanburg city record it's on my wall i'm very proud of it so i'm number <laughs> one because i won uh-huh very good Yeah, yeah. So I think another one that is relevant to you, Alexia, is where and where. Where are you going and what should I wear tonight? Ha. Huh. 
Exactly. <laughs> like good thing to note is when you talk about wearing clothes, we don't use clothes in English. This is a very common mistake that almost all of our our students make at some point or another. Yes, Alexia. <laughs> and, <raising> your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, for shoes, should I say wear as well? Yes. And like earrings and rings and watches, it's all wear. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Pretty much anything we put on our bodies. Not like tattoos, but anything that we can remove easily, we would say wear. Perfect. Okay. So what do you think about these first groups of homophones that we're working with? Is it really confusing? Is it easy for you with the context? No, with the context, it's very easy. Um, but I can imagine that for some people that are having trouble with English, this could be very complicated because you need to understand what's going on to understand which word the person is talking about and which word he has to use. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> okay, first of all, we have one more number. I forgot about it. Nossa senhora. Four and four. We actually four have three fours. Four. Why? There's another four that I completely forgot about. So we have four the number, F-O-U-R, right? Uh-huh. So I had to go to the bathroom four times today. I don't doubt it. <laughs> I don't know if that's correct, but it's a good guess, I'm sure. Um, I'm getting This is for you. Yeah, I'm getting a present for you, right? Thank you. I'm preparing for the party on Friday. Uh -huh. That's just the easy preposition. And then there is also the word F-O-R-E, which we use a lot in golf. So, for example, if you hit a golf ball and it is going like towards the crowd and it's going to hit somebody, you yell for. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. You could use it in another context as well, but. <laughs> the last version of four is not that common. My, my, uh, what Kiki significa for in this situation? Uh, What's for? Like, watch out, be careful. It's just like a, an expression, like for. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, kind of the reason I wanted to talk about homophones is because. And the last one for. You said that there were two more. I said there were three fours. Ah, sorry. Yeah, not for force. Wow, that's complicated. Okay, so we have all of these words in English that we pronounce the exact same, but the way we write them are completely different. And this is something that my students always ask about. Like, uh, tell me the difference between there, there, and there. That's so confusing. And really, the thing is, almost all the time, In context, it will make complete, perfect sense, right? Yeah. So let's take the example of Mary and Mary, right? Like my brother is getting married in February. And then mm -hmm. we have Mary like happy, like Merry Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I Eat, wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Right. So there's no way that you would confuse those unless there was a very strange circumstance. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. But I think that people, that's why, that's why pronunciation is so, so important. And that's why knowing the words is so important as well. Yeah. For example, the word son and son. So you can say son, like my son, meu filho. And sun, like the big star in the sky that keeps our planet from not, you know, dying. That's why I can't say your dog's name. Exactly. So this is a great example. My dog's name is Sunny. And we spell that. We write it with an O. 
So automatically, Alexia's Portuguese-speaking brain is like, hmm, the way I want to say that is sunny, sunny. But if you're talking about it's sunny outside, you say it correctly. But that's the thing, that you are confusing our writing system with our speaking system, and they are completely disconnected. So <laughs> just imagine you can write sunny however you want, as long as you say it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> It's very hard. <laughs> yeah, I, I always say sunny. Yeah. So the important sunny. thing. Sunny. That's much better. Much better. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think that after almost three years and a half relationship, <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah, it's about time. Yeah. <laughs> So just to summarize the important thing, first, homophones are just two words that have the same pronunciation, but we write them differently and they have different meanings. And secondly, this is just one more reason why you should always start with the sounds and focus on pronunciation first, because if you're thinking about, oh, eight and eight, one, the number eight would be like, eight, and then the past tense of the verb to eat would be like achi if you're trying to pronounce them with a Brazilian sound system. But if you just know, okay, we have two words, eight and eight. One is a number. One is the past tense of to eat. Way more simple. Yeah. Yes, it is. So this was a very nice episode, Emil. Thank you. Yeah, it was a good one. I think we won. <laughs> yes, I think we won. Yeah, we need to prepare at least four more episodes for next week. Uh huh. Why do you, why why are you doing that? Four, four, one, one. No. I understood. I'm just using <laughs> all my phones. But it seems like you have no idea what I'm talking about. You know. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop. Thanks, Alexia. Thanks, everyone. We will see you guys tomorrow. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of English no Kuru Haju. If you like what we do, if you want to support the show, here's what you can do. Leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Android, wherever you listen to the podcast. It really helps other people discover the show. And... You can sign up for our VIP newsletter. So each time we release new courses, early discounts for Sound School, new worksheets, special discounts, the people on our newsletter are the first to know. So if you are interested in the things we are doing, go to EnglishNewCrew.com and sign up. And as always, keep up the good fight and lose well. Até já.